Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today <clears throat> we're going to be going over three strategies you guys can use to take profits during the crypto bull run in LTCN, mainly LTCN, but also the other grayscale trusts as we're going into the end of the year, which presumably is when the bull run is going to happen, assuming the Fed doesn't screw stuff up. So with that being said, let's get it. So the first strategy that I'm going to go over with you guys is um, I'm pretty sure you guys already know about this one, but we're going to go over it in more minute detail. So uh, the first strategy would either to be to um, so basically uh, you could take a third, a third, a third and a third and so on all the way basically from the amount of shares that you have accumulated before the bull run takes place. Let's let's just say hypothetically you have a thousand shares of LTCN. OK. And by the end of the bull run, you want to be at zero shares. Uh, so hypothetically, what you could do is you could say, okay, this is what I want my average share count or share cost to be. I want to have a thousand shares at no more than $10 a share. So that would kind of be like your starting point. And then basically you want to take a look at the chart and say, okay, so what I want to do is I want to start taking some profit once, let's say, LTCN gets to $200. So I want to take a third at $200. And then let's just say, hypothetically, every $20 that it goes up from there, you want to take a third every $20 increase. Okay, And you basically just rinse and repeat that strategy until it gets to zero. So you have 1,000 shares at $10. LTCN, let's say eight months from now, gets to $200. You take a third of your initial position out. So you sell 333 shares, goes up another $20. You sell another third, and then you just keep rinsing and repeating as it goes up. And presumably you make way more money than you lose. Best case scenario, you lose nothing at all and you just make pure profit, no losses whatsoever. Okay. Of course, you got to pay taxes. So that there's that. That sucks. But, you know, I mean, if you're taking, uh, if your average share count is $10 and you have a thousand shares and you start taking profit at $200, I would think that the taxes would be the last thing on your mind. Uh, of course, you know, don't ever mess with the IRS, not financial advice, but, uh, don't try to do tax avoidance or something like that. They'll know, and they'll probably try to come after you. So, um, I'm not speaking from experience. We've always been in upstanding with the IRS, always paid taxes on time, even early if we owed taxes, uh, so that would be the first strategy. Another way that you could do this, um, kind of like an altered version, is you could do these in quarter increments. So let's use the same kind of scenario. Let's say you have a thousand shares at ten dollars. That's your average cost is ten dollars, and you have a thousand total shares. Um, and you want to take profit four times over the course of the bull run. So uh, this is a little bit different. You're not going to be scaling out per se, but you're going to be taking. Uh, measured profits on the way up. So let's say you'll say, okay, I want to start taking profit at $200. Okay. So I'm going to take 25% at 200. I'm going to take another 25% at 300. I'm going to take another 25% at 400. And I'm going to take the last 25% at 500 or as close to 500 as humanly possible. So let's take a look at that now. And we'll say, so basically you have $10,000 invested in the LTCN. That's what $10 a share times a thousand, a thousand shares is. So you make $200 on your first batch that you sell. So that's $190 a share in profit times 250 shares would make you about 47,500. And then you sell at 300. So that would be 290 times 250. We'll add all these up later. So 72.5, uh, 390 times uh, 250. So that would be 97.5. And then the last amount would be, um, sorry, excuse me, 490 times 250. So you have 122,500 plus 97,500. So we'll add these 97,500 plus 72.5 and 47.5. Let's actually make sure that's accurate. 
Okay, yeah, looks good. So this is pretty much more or less what you would wind up with. Take your initial cost basis out of this. And that's the amount of money that you would walk away. Now, is this the best case scenario where you're going to absolutely maximize the most amount of profit humanly possible down to the cent? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but again, um, this is just one position that we plan on taking in crypto. We have many different positions, including native and non-native crypto. Or, well, we have one position in non-native crypto right now. Well, four, actually, three Bitcoin miner stocks plus HSN, but we do plan on holding both BCHG and LTCN going into the bull run. So this is one way that you could do it. Uh, the second way that you could do it is you could do position trading. This is what the whales do, okay? And um, generally speaking, whales in the markets only trade one asset, okay? They do not trade multiple assets. They just trade one and they trade massive amounts of that one asset. Okay, so that's the reason why you, when you hear the term like Bitcoin whale or Ethereum whale, that's exactly what they are. They're a whale of that particular asset. They just trade that one asset. That's all they do. Okay, and a Bitcoin or Ethereum whale could be somebody that has thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands or millions of Bitcoin or Ethereum. Well, I don't think there's anybody that has more than a million uh, Bitcoin besides Satoshi, but there's probably some whales out there that do have over a million ETH. So this is all they do, okay? They just position trade and they get in and out with huge amounts of money, tens, hundreds of millions, maybe even billions of dollars. It's hard to say how much um, you would have to look at their wallets and kind of gauge what kind of uh, positions they're moving. But pretty much all they do is they buy at a support zone. Okay, very simple. They probably use some kind of basic technical analysis or maybe maybe they're more sophisticated traders, not exactly sure. Um, position trading and swing trading are two different things. Okay, they are different. Uh, we'll go over that later. But position trading is more or less in the raw, just buying at support, selling at resistance. So when we did our recent trade, we did a position trade more or less where we bought here and kind of sold close to this area, although we didn't sell exactly at the top. We got uh, kind of right here at 1150, but it's, it's not exact. But if we were to trade starting here and then sell up here, um, how exactly would we do this? Well, basically, we would put the lump sum of the money in here at a support zone that we think is going to hold. You got this uptrend line, these EMAs and the support zone all kind of confluencing together. So we'd say, OK, we're going to put you know, I don't know, we're going to buy 10,000 LTCN shares at this, at this particular zone. And then we're going to sell when it gets into this box. Now, does it need to be a specific price in this box? That depends on the trader. Okay. It depends on the whale, what they're looking at, how sophisticated they are. Maybe some of them have a, a particular price target. Maybe they use Fibonacci's uh, Bollinger Bands. We haven't started using those yet because we don't feel like it's relevant just yet. Uh, those are those are indicators that help when we're in price discovery, but we're not in price discovery. Uh, so basically they buy the bulk down here, sell up here. And then what do they do after that? Well, generally speaking, they pretty much just sit on the cash. Once they, once they cash out, they just sit on the cash. They wait for it to come back down to a macro support zone. And then they buy back in and rinse and repeat. So you guys might be asking, well, what if this resistance turns into support? Well, generally speaking, what the whales are probably going to do is they're going to wait for a breakout candle with a close above. So you get a body candle close above here, and then we come back and retest. And they're probably going to put either half or all of their position into this support zone, depending on how confident they are. And then they wait to take profit at the next resistance zone. And then once that happens, they just hold the cash and they either wait for it to come back down to this support zone or move up to the following resistance zone, or I should say retest resistance as support up here and then move into the following resistance zone. So pretty much all you're doing is just buying at macro support, waiting for it to hit resistance, uh, sitting on cash, and then waiting for it to come back down to the sub previous support zone or flip resistance into support, buy there, and then move up to the next resistance zone from there. This is known as position trading or positioning. This is something that the whales do, not just in crypto, but in in the traditional markets as well. So that's strategy number two. You can do this throughout the entire bull run if you wanted to, okay? 
or even before the bull run like we're doing. Strategy number three is basically just taking the entire profit off the table at a, a, a certain, basically a certain price target. Okay. So uh, this one's pretty simplistic, but it could get complicated pretty easy. So let's use the same scenario. Let's just say you have a thousand shares of LTCN at $10 and you say, okay, I'm not going to sell my shares of LTCN until it gets to, we'll just say, mm, I don't want, I don't really want to sell. This is a hypothetical. Of course, I don't want to sell until we get to $300 a share. Once we get to 300, I'm out. I'm selling everything hundred percent of my position. That's going to be it. So, um, basically you would get 290 a share times a thousand shares. Uh, this is what you would get. Obviously you can see it's a little bit less than the taking the quarter profits every hundred dollar move up, but it's a large amount of money nonetheless. Okay. Minus the cost basis that you had. So what you could do in this particular position is you could just say, okay, I'm done. I'm out. I'm going to take my profit and run, put aside money for taxes, yada, yada. You could take um, a portion of that after-tax money, and this is something we've considered doing as well, and you could put that into another position that has not yet run up that you think is going to run up. Like um, I know Ethan talked about like second wave movers, and this does happen in crypto, just so you all know. We've seen it firsthand. Okay, Bitcoin usually moves first, and then when whoever is going to take profit out of Bitcoin, whether it be whales, re retail traders, whatever, move the money into Ethereum and then into large cap altcoins and so on and so on. Okay. So there's waves in crypto that you can take profit in. So let's just assume that LTCN moved first and then HCN moved after. Um, and let's say maybe there was a month in between that, but you don't want to put everything on the table. You don't want to risk everything. You're like, well, it's a lot of money. I don't want to risk losing all of my money in case this thing dumps. So what you could do is we'll take out the cost basis here. Okay, this is the 100% profit taking strategy right here. We'll just, um, we'll assume you pay, I don't know, a third in taxes. So we'll just say 93,000. And we'll deduct that from here. So you could say, well, I don't really want to risk a, a ridiculous amount of money. I kind of want to keep some of this because there's no guarantee that if I put it back in the markets, I'm going to get all of it back. I might lose it all. So we'll just say that you put in your initial investment times three, okay? So you still get to walk away with a, a huge amount of money, even after taxes, and that money is safe. You can put it in dividend paying stocks or index funds or whatever you want, something that's considered to be traditionally safe, safe dividend paying ETFs that are stable, something along those lines. And you could say, okay, I'm gonna do my initial investment times three. I'm gonna put it into, let's say, HCent, okay? Let's assume HCent's at $2 by that time, and it moonshots up to like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. So it'd be a 25 X. All right. So then as you guys can see, uh, just taking this small amount of money, getting a nice juicy 25 X gain, you guys can see that you made way more money by repositioning even just a small amount into a different position. Uh, this is conservative. Of course, you can put all the profits you made back into a new position. Of course, you're running a huge risk there. And do understand that um, you will still have to pay taxes. So uh, whenever we take profits, we always, always under any under any circumstances, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's whether we made a little bit or a lot, we always the first thing we do is set aside money for taxes because the IRS is going to want their cut. They're not going to make any exceptions. I'm going to tell you right now. So um, you could do this or you could spread the money out over multiple different positions. That's up to you. You could take a small percentage of the profit or the entire profit, reposition it back into a new position. That's entirely up to you. Or you could just take the money and run and say, screw it. I don't want to risk it. I'm done. This is good enough for me. I'll wait till the next crypto bull run or just go buy dividend paying stocks or sit on cash, whatever. Okay. So these are the three different strategies that, that you can use during the crypto bull run to take profits. Uh, it's not set in stone. You could do different variations of this, however you want to play it. Um, and there is probably more strategies out there, but I would say these are three very basic ones that most people could probably execute and understand. Um, but do understand um, when the crypto hype is on and everybody's getting pumped up and they're like, yeah, everything's going to go to the moon. We're going to be rich guys. Tread carefully at that point in time. Okay. 
usually when things look the most bullish, everybody's a genius. Everybody's, you know, they're the smartest person on Wall Street. Well, they don't work on Wall Street, but you get my point. Uh, that's usually when the whales come in and dump on the market. So just a little bit of tidbit of uh, wisdom there. You guys can do with it what you want. We've seen it firsthand in the previous crypto bull run. That's not financial advice. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Let us know your thoughts down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.